Okay, so now that we've talked about a lot of good charts, about how to make them, about different designs, how to tweak them, let's talk about what not to use for charts. We've already mentioned a couple of times how there are certain types of line charts and area charts that just don't work. But there's a whole other range of charts you just should not use inside of Excel. I'm going to use a couple of examples here as we walk through to kind of give you more of a first-hand look. The first thing is 3D. Now, 3D looks cool. It has that initial reaction where you're like, yeah, that person really knows Excel. The problem about 3D is that it's there to distort your perspective. Now, even something as simple as adding this little 3D here, what's happening is that it's trying to trick your brain into seeing the screen as 3D when it's not really 3D and making it harder for you to be accurate with your visual perception system. So generally I say don't do 3D, especially the kinds of 3Ds that do larger distortions. Like this is a favorite of a lot of people here. Now if I look at this, there's a couple of problems with it. One is that I can't see the bars that are behind. The other problem is that the chart bars that are behind are going to be shorter than the ones that are in front. And so it's really hard to tell like which of these are actually taller when they're very close to each other. So generally speaking, just don't use 3D for these kinds of things. It just doesn't add anything to the visual perception system. Same thing applies for using bars going left to right as top to bottom. Now when you look at lines, you kind of have some similar problems. I don't know why Excel even built this 3D line one in there because it's really, really hard to understand. It's very difficult for me to look at this and say what's higher, purple or blue or red, because I don't really know what plane they're on. I'm not sure if they're on the front or if they're on the back. So again, just don't use that kind of chart. It doesn't really add anything to our visual perception. Same thing with 3D area charts. Putting them behind each other doesn't make it easier to understand what's happening here. Now you can kind of tweak it a little bit if you do the select data and put the bigger data series behind sometimes it'll be able to kind of make it work a little easier like you can put the green in front or the red behind that one but you're still trying to mess with people's visual persistence by simulating a 3d kind of environment so those are lines generally speaking don't use those now pie charts are fine there's nothing wrong with a good pie chart it's fairly easy for people to understand and see the problem with it though is when you start putting the 3d effect on it when I put the 3D effect on, what's happening is that Excel is making the back look smaller to be appear to be further away. And as I look at it, I can actually tweak some of the size options and I can affect which one's bigger or smaller based off of what square or slice is near to you or further to you. Now, if I make this slope a little bit more, you'll see a better example of it down here. So this pie, let me make it a little bit larger for you. This pie has a more aggressive tilt to it than the previous one. And watch what happens as I rotate these around. Right now, it's very obvious that blue is the biggest, but you think about red and green, how to compare those two. Red looks a lot smaller now than green does, whereas before, I could make it look bigger if I put it on the front side. So this is why it's dangerous to have 3D. You can kind of figure it out just by knowing what the angles are, but you're making it a lot harder for your viewers to do the right thing and to easily understand the actual chart. Okay, so we talked about pie charts. Basic pies are okay, 3D ones are not. Now there's some other ones here, like tree map is kind of an interesting one you might use in certain situations, there's nothing wrong with that one, or the sunburst. Um, you have to be careful of things like box and whiskers because most people don't really know how to read those. Even scatter plots. There's a lot of people out there that can't read a scatter plot chart or are not sure what it really means. So what I really recommend to you is, again, you have to know your audience well. If you know your audience, then you can usually steer clear the biggest errors. Let's look at a couple examples of other more subtle errors. So in the example I have here, we're looking at data that has three teams and then a market average value. Now, you could want to show something about how many sales were in each round, which again, makes sense. It's a fairly straightforward idea to be able to show. And you decide, I want to stack A, B, and C on top of each other to show the total sales. That's great, except for one problem. If you look at the chart here, you have the three values that are stacked, which again is fine. 
but on top of that you mar you've stacked the market average. And the problem there is that you can't really stack this on top because this is the average of the other three values. Basically you're just double counting. You can do this pretty easily with businesses as well. Imagine stacking your revenue, your expenses, and your profit. You're basically counting for the profitability twice because you have it once as revenue and a second time as income. So it distorts the overall thing. So just remember, if you're going to stack stuff, make sure that if you add the numbers together, it actually makes sense. If I was to look at the raw data behind this and add these numbers together, you could tell me, oh, well, that doesn't make any sense. A plus C plus B plus the average, well, that doesn't mean anything. Same thing as a chart. If the total doesn't mean anything, you should not be stacking it. Let's do another one. Another common error you'll see is by having too small a value. Someone had a lot of data in this chart and they weren't really super careful about displaying it. They just put a chart together and walked away. Something like this where you've got tiny values really should be made as a combo chart. Another common error we talked about is area charts. Don't use area charts where they go behind each other. Make sure they're actually stacked. You can often guess, but often you can't tell for certain unless you can actually click on it, in which case you'll see, oh yeah, the blue goes to here, to here, to here. Even though I can't see it, it's still there. We talked about the, bar, the pie chart again. Don't use 3D, and if you're going to do this, be careful about which one's closer or further away from you. Now this again is a line chart. There's two problems with this particular one. The first is that we're not 100% sure if it's a stacked or if it's a clustered line. Like we talked about, it's dangerous to do a stacked line chart because you can't tell exactly where it starts and where it stops. And this one's doubly dangerous because it does look like the lines actually cross a little bit. But if you look at product B in round two, you'll see it actually has a negative number. So now it's stacking a negative number on top of a positive number, which means it looks like it goes underneath. A better version of this chart would be to use a clustered line. When I go to a clustered line, you'll see a much different looking chart. But the first one is stacking the lines on top of each other. The other issue we have in charts is sometimes people will end up with these ref errors. This basically means you had a data series, but it got deleted. So if I came up here to product B and deleted it, my chart now is having a problem because it says, oh, I'm pointing to something that doesn't exist anymore. So if you get this error, click on your chart and go to select data. Under select data, you'll see that I have these series of data that no longer exist. And so I'm going to click the minus sign to get rid of those two non-existent data series. And now I have a nice clean option over here. Now these mistakes might seem kind of basic, but if you actually look at real companies, you'll find they make these kind of mistakes all the time. One of my favorite mistakes people make is by messing with the axis. So the axis right here is the numbering system. Now if I look at this particular one, we look like we're doing quite healthy growth as a company. The first value there is pretty low and it gets higher and a pretty steady clip as we move along. The problem though is that we're not starting at zero. We're actually starting the chart at 100. By starting the chart at 100, we're making it appear as if the growth is a lot more significant than it actually is. If I was to go ahead and make a regular chart off of this to show you how distorted it is, you'll see them side by side. So this is the actual real data for the chart. As we look at this, we can see that the bar chart should start at zero, but right now it's at 100. So let's fix it. We double click on this and start at zero. Now, unfortunately, Excel often will default doing this for you. When I click off of this and go back, you'll see now that I have growth, but it doesn't look nearly as impressive as it did in the chart that's on the left-hand side. So whenever you see a chart with the axis that doesn't start at zero, remember they're overestimating the amount of change. Here's another example. This is an example submitted by a company for their annual SEC 10K report. Because they put nuclear in the front, it's overestimating it as a percentage. It makes coal look a little bit smaller, and purchase power look smaller, and gas and oil look smaller. They obviously want to show off their nuclear proportion, but they're doing so by distorting the viewer's perceptions. 
Here's another example. This particular chart does show how someone's stock, how company stock would change as compared to the overall S&P. If you look at it, you'll see that it starts at 100 here, and so it overestimates the change. If they started at zero instead of 50, the change would look less significant. Sometimes people even do these messed up axes in charts with unlabeled axes. If I look at this one, you'll see that we're, this company is talking about their gross margin. They showed that in 2010, they had a better gross margin than 2009 or 2008. But the problem here is that even though they show you the numbers, they're starting these places not at zero. They're saying right now with the bar chart that the difference between 52% and 49.5% is this whole mass right here. And really, it's actually very small. If I was to make this chart myself and show you the difference, you'll see that there's just really not this dramatic change in margin. When I do it by double clicking on the guy right here on the axis, set the minimum to zero, and now you can see there's actually a very small change happening here. But this is much less impressive than this is. So sometimes people will try and manipulate the charts or they're just not realizing and they'll just use the defaults given to them by Excel. Even professional companies can give you charts that are just plain old wrong. This is another example of a chart that was submitted as part of a company's annual SEC filings. So these are mandated by law and are really, really important. But yet this company seems to think that 0.57 and 0.66 are exactly the same number. So you got to be careful with charts. People can do a lot of weird things with them that you may not expect. And if you're not really paying attention, it's easy to be fooled. Lastly, let me look at this example. This is another stacking problem. They have revenue in blue and operating income in gray. The problem is by stacking them, they're overestimating the growth. They're counting this 14.9 million once here and a second time inside of the revenue. So really you can't stack revenue and income because you're counting the same number twice. Because of that, it makes their growth look more impressive because every dollar counts twice rather than every dollar counts once. So hopefully this gives you some examples of some bad charts that you might see out there and some of the ways you can design your charts to avoid making the same mistakes.